this matchup aren't using it, they are using some different versions of these Pokemon, in, whether that be their typing or their predecessors, with Ring Moon taking the field on Julia Martinez's team here. And uh, as you can see, that Armor Rouge and DD Core, but a little bit different than what we normally see is that Armor Rouge is a weakness policy Armor Rouge next to a U turn Ring Moon. So uh, that's going to be fun to see if that gets called off in our match today. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and just say that if you've played VGC for even just a little bit, you have lost against a team like this at least one time. Uh, <laughs> whether it be just a standard armor can EV set or that weak armor uh, set uh, with, of course, you know, the Roaring Moon has U-Turn. Which, you know, if you combine it with Endure on Armor Rogue and just you turn into it means that you can activate that weakness policy and also the weak armor, meaning that this Armor Rogue is going to be fast, it's going to be powerful, and it's just going to start uh, going for expanding forces and tearing through your team if you're not a dark type. <laughs> Yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna completely tear through them. And even if they are a dark type, the boarding cast helps that out. But of course, as well as supporting, you have the support that Julian has from their placements over the past few years. They were a special event top eight back in 2018, Players Cup number one top eight in 2020, as well as multiple top 16 finishes here in VGC World Cup. So. Yeah, out for blood by getting that top eight place. They want to go higher, further, and faster. And with a team like this, which is a very fast and offensive team, you know that you can, especially when you have that trick remote as well, with that Bronzong on the team, offering that cheeky skill swap into any of these Pokemon weak to ground, give them levitate, as well as making itself even bulkier with that iron defense. Yeah, some very unusual sets, but also the bronze on the Pokemon we don't see too often. But, you know, with accomplishments like that, Julian is definitely a player who knows what he is doing. Also, you know, that Choice Specs Torkoal is going to do a lot of damage if Trick Room does come up. You know, we saw a Life Orb set just a few games earlier that did a lot of damage, and a Choice Specs is just going to do even more. And, uh, yeah, in combination with that Bronzong, we talked a little bit uh, off screen as well how, you know, with Skill Swap, you can, lev you know, you can get the Torkoal to levitate and be immune to the ground type attacks, as can the Armor Rogue, or maybe even that Roaring Moon if it goes for a Terra Poison. Yeah, it's just a toolbox that has so much going for it, especially, you know, when you, when you have that slow mode set up and you can just Trick Room, that's a Skill Swap, sorry, that ability onto something. Of course, let's see if that skill swap potential will have anything onto the opponents here. We do see Yang Chi Lun's team coming up on our screen right now. Of course, has had regional top 16s, regional top 8s, and a regional championship to their name in the past two or three years. But of course, their team next to them is full of very familiar faces with Rillaboom, Landorus Core, Chempel, Dragonite coming out for the action. And King Gambit, Flamain rounding out the team, and this time, King Gambit has that black glasses for even more dark type damage. It does have the black glasses, but it's not playing Swords Dance. In this case, it is the Iron Headset, which is still a very, very good move to have on it. The set has also, I believe, already won a regional championship. And otherwise, yeah, Pokemon that we've seen around for, you know, quite some time. Uh, very, very powerful combinations, especially the Chi and Power Dragonite, one of the strongest duos in the current regulation and also in the past regulations. So yeah, gonna see how this fares against something like an Armor Rogue in DD team, which, you know, of course, with the Psychic Terrain, is gonna be able to block moves like Extreme Speed, Sucker Punch from both King Gambit and Chi and Pao. Uh, but, or yeah, even the, the Fake Out from the Rillaboom, you know, if the Psychic Terrain is up. But Rillaboom, you know, with Grassy Surge, if it switches in, does have the ability to get rid of that priority blocking. Yeah, it has the ability to get rid of that priority blocking. So it's going to be a back and forth fight of who gets that terrain set up. And that is going to be something that plays heavy in this matchup. With that skill swap though on the Pokemon, this high horsepower and stopping tantrum on multiple of the Pokemon aren't going to be doing too much damage if pulled off correctly. But with game one ready to go to see if our players do opt to go for those strategies to get their victory and put the team a step closer to that crown as we see Chen Pao plus King Gambit coming out from one side and then we do see that typical lead so we might be seeing that combo straight away with the Roaring Moon plus the Armor Rouge. Yeah, we could see the Roaring Moon go for a U-turn right away, of course, and if the Arbor Rogue goes for an Endure, then it is not going to care about either of these Dark-type Pokémon going for attacks into it. And, you know, this King Ambit, of course, uh, you know, 
doesn't really need Sword Dance when it has a partner like Chi and Pao, but uh, the Roaring Moon is going to be, probably with the speed boost, the fastest Pokémon on the field, so if it does go for a U-turn, then uh, it will be able to get it off with no problem. The Chi and Pao is not going to be able to go for Icicle Crash um, into that slot before the U-turn, and we are going to see a Terrestrialization here right away, turn 1. Yeah, the Terrestrialization turn 1 allows for something to take this a bit better. Now, is that King Gambit going for that Dragon Typing? So we've kind of seen the whole spectrum of King Gambit's types, whether or not you want to take your you know, weaknesses to fire it better, your weaknesses to fire it better. This one, once they take those fire type weaknesses a lot better, especially in the face of what's coming in front of them. Sucker Punch comes out, goes into what was that endure, so trying to make sure you can maybe break through that weakness policy combo as it does go down to a low bit of HP. Uh, weak armor activates, raising the speed, but lowering the defenses, and of course, coming up just behind that is that weakness policy. So Armor Rouge is ready to go from that turn 1, and as we see from its team sheet, it does carry that stored power, so even if it doesn't go for that heat wave, it is still throwing out loads of damage into either of these Pokémon. Yeah, interesting that the Chi and Pao decided to go for Sucker Punch there. I'm wondering if um, maybe he expected Armor Rogue to not go for Endure that turn, because I personally would have expected something like an Icicle Crash into the Roaring Moon maybe. But uh, then again, you know, that could have gone for Terra Poison, so it wasn't necessarily a safe move. And yeah, this King Gambit being a Dragon type now means that Armor Rogue will be able to hit it with Expanding Force. Still not going to do any damage to the Chi and Pao though. And you know, Breaking Swipe, even though that might be super effective, uh, is not very strong and it's not going to it's gonna boost King Gambit's attack uh, rather than dropping it, thanks to the Defiant. And that is just the race that you run with these Pokémon. You know that you're getting a stat drop, you know you're getting some sort of stat boost, you're getting everything and everywhere on these Pokémon. Yeah, given that the Armour Rouge is now at its fullest potential, it knows what it wants to be doing. We see King Gambit switching out though, which means there is going to be something taking his hit from the back. And if we see something like that Heat Wave coming out from this Armour Rouge, especially with that Rillaboom coming on the field, oh. we know that it's going to be a bad situation, especially with that Grassy Train, you know. Expanding Force is going to be a double up, but Sucker Punch goes yeah. through! Yeah, no, that is a, a good switch there because uh, the, the switch... Um, or uh, Yeah, the, the fact that the Roaring Moon switched out before the King Gambit means that uh, you know, it was really important in this case because... Um, yeah, uh, Xilang definitely expected the Ndidi to come in here to block that Sucker Punch from the Qianbao. So very, very smart uh, on his hand to just predict that. Switch in the Rillaboom, get rid of the Psychic Terrain so the Sucker Punch can once again come through and KO that Armor Rogue before it can do any massive damage. And it just gets even worse for Julian here because you have that Earth Luna in play who is already weak to this Rillaboom without having to go to terrestrialization, becomes weak to a Chen Pao if it does terrestrialize. Yes, you lose your ice type weakness, but without any psychic terrain, Sucker Punch is just around the corner. And yeah, and even if so, with that grassy terrain up, your earthquake is doing less and less damage, so you're forced into that facade most likely. Roman can come in to try and put a bit of pressure down, but given that it's going to also be weak to the Pokemon on the field, it isn't going to be happy. A Trastalization does come out, so to see if Julian read this well, or if Yang Chilun is going to go for every bit of damage onto the threat that is the Ursa Luna, because indeed he wasn't really doing much in the state it was in. Wasn't doing that much, but an Icicle Crash going into this Roaring Moon that just switched in is going to take it out, no problem. That is two Pokémon down for Julian already. And yeah, this Wood Hammer is going to do neutral damage to this Ursa Luna. It's not going to be enough to knock it out, so a great trustalization there for Julian. As the Facade going into the Chien Pao is not going to be enough to knock it out, really showcasing that Ursa Luna. Sometimes you really, really want that Guts boost, otherwise you just might fall short on some very crucial KOs. And falling short is what it does just here right now, showing that you have to have that burn route to make Ursula do its thing. It's one of those Pokemon where you know, it is really, really powerful, its base stats can carry it above and beyond, but you can sometimes work around it if you know your bulk quite well. Indeed, coming in stops anything like a Sucker Punch coming through, which can be a bit helpful given the Pokemon on the field, but given how low Earth Luna is right now with its HP, either of these Pokemon could just kind of look at it and it goes down. It's, it's a bit of a bad news bear situation. It's taking its damage. It hasn't done too much of its own. And Liang Chi Lun is able to just run rampant with the field state right now. 
Yeah, and an Icicle Crash coming out onto the Sindidi is going to do a lot of damage thanks to the critical hit and a Wood Hammer following up from the Rillaboom is enough to knock out the Sindidi, so won't be able to go for something like a Trick Room and also didn't go for a Helping Hand. So uh, yeah, this Ursa Luna is all on its own right now and it is going to go for a Facade into the Rillaboom slot will be more than enough to knock it out, especially with that Chi and Pao and the Guts boost helping it out a little bit. But uh, yeah, at this point, Ursa Luna with the little bit of HP it has left um, and no form of speed control on the field means that it will not be able to win against Chi and Pao and all the other Pokemon that uh, Shenong still has in the back. It's not going to do too well and to make your worries even worse if you're Hulian, you see that King Gambit coming on in like, yes, you can try and go for an earthquake and try and hope there's some sort of like, maybe they get a bit too greedy or anything, but yep. It's a, it's a Pokemon known to be on the strongest Dark types. Ice Will Crash does not miss and gets to hit into that slot there. So it does go in favor of Chi Lun. Hulian's out to the very end. Played it quite well, you know, knew what to do, but then Chi Lun, just with that Rillaboom really switch in, changed the flow of the game because it removed that Psychic Terrain and it also removed that ability to avoid any priority attacks, which became useful against that really speedy Armor Rouge we saw in play today. Yeah, that play definitely, I think, just won him the game because once that armor rogue went down, you know, he had the setup for it, but then, uh, yeah, you know, having that uh, pretty obvious Indeedee switch in called correctly and switching in the Rillaboom, and then, you know, being in a position where you can't really count on getting up a trick room for the Ursa Luna just meant that yeah there was not really much he could do after that um, of course you know maybe an Icicle Crash could have missed maybe and indeed he gets off a, a trick room but uh, I feel like even then um, you know the the King Gambit having gone for the Terra Dragon meaning you're not weak to the Earthquake from the Ursa Luna anymore who knows if you know you would have managed to KO it then but that's yeah that, that's the only way where I might see uh, Julian maybe still making a comeback. So yeah, um, his opponent definitely knows how to um, play against this kind of weak armor. Armor Rogue set has definitely you know seen this trick uh, at least one time before. Um, and now going into game two, I think Julian really needs to uh, maybe go for a different approach. Maybe you know go set up Trick Room right away, or maybe protect his armor Rogue just a little bit better. Yeah, to see what does go for here. Did you see that the, the double Trick Room lead actually coming out on this first turn? So you have to kind of play the game of who's going for that Trick Room. You can't suck a punch into... Even if you have a Trick Room, you can't suck a punch. So a very well-played lead here from Julian, just making sure that no damage is thrown down as much as possible. And with no other Dark-type moves coming out from that Chen Pound, we know that it's likely going to have to go for that Ice Crash and hope for a flinch. If not, just have to switch out completely and allow the Cowtown Cleaves coming out from this King Gambit to do all the work for it. Of course, we can maybe see something like that to transition to that fire type to make sure that it takes those hits well, or just relying on that raw luck of way on these go. Follow me, of course, is the way to save your grace here. As it is to redirect all these attacks away. Ice Crash will go into that indeed. We know how much it did last time. It just misses the knockout. Cowtown Cleave will guarantee that knockout, allowing the Bronzong to get the Trick Room up. And this is the ball flowing for Julian, especially with two Pokemon weak to fire sat on the field right now. It's going to be a heyday for whatever Pokemon comes in. Yeah, if the Armor Rogue would have come in here, Heatwave, I don't know if it would have been enough for the King Gambit, but this Torkoal coming in here is going to do way more damage with the Sun and the Choice Specs helping it out. Um, and I mean, this Chien Pao does have Focus Sash, so it will take at least one attack, but the Bronzong is also playing Body Press. So maybe Chi and Pao, if it goes for like a Terra Ghost here, will be able to survive this turn because there's nothing else that the Bronzong has attacking wise aside from that one fighting move. Uh, so that, that could be an interesting option for um, Shilong maybe, but this King Gambit is in a lot of danger so we might want to consider a switch, but what do you really switch into in this situation? The only Pokemon that can really take or might be able to take an eruption okay-ish might be the Dragonite. <laughs> yeah, Dragonite seems to be the only Pokemon that comes in in this situation, but if you read the room a bit further you do notice that with the possibility of these Iron Defenses going off and giving Bronzong even more stat boosts, you look at the team that Yang Chi Lun has, and that is all physical attackers but the Fluttermane. And of those physical attackers, not many of them can hit well into a Steel type, and if it's a Terrestrialize, not many of them hit very well into a Fire type with Levitate either. 
and the first iron defense going off means that that ball is rolling and you can start seeing the body presses taking action heatwave goes down puts a sash to on to that Chen Pao. Hopefully there are no burns that cause any worry for that Chen Pao loses. Focus Sash or Magnet King damage in this damage, and there is not. This Kato Cleave comes through, goes into that Torkoal, does a massive amount of damage. Sucker Punch follows oh! up. He lives! <laughs> he needs to be here for another Heat Wave with that Body Press rolling. That could be very, very dangerous. Oh, wow. Yeah, that I wasn't sure if the Torko would survive that Sacred Sword because, you know, with the Chi and Pao helping King Gambit deal so much damage, uh, I really wasn't sure if it could survive, but yeah, Torkoal just barely hanging on means that it can fire off another heat wave next turn. And now that this Bronzong has gone for a iron defense, this body press will probably be enough to help knock out this King Gambit if it does not go for a protect. But Torkoal instead switching out here for Hunian, bringing back in the or bringing in the Ursaluna, and uh, yeah, now that the Terra is out, Chi and Pao cannot go for Terra Ghost anymore. So also um, threatened by the Brody Press. But King Gambit also switching out here for the Rillaboom. So the Psychic Terrain is no more on Hunian's side, and that could be a big problem in the rest of this game. It could be a big problem about that ability to reset it, especially again with this Ursa Luna being in a position where it doesn't like seeing this grassy terrain being active. But on the flip side, Chi Yun doesn't really like seeing a Bronzong that's now turned into the into the fire type, taking less and less damage for these Pokemon, and it is in that plus two situation. Body Press goes on out into what was that King Gamma doing a massive chunk to this Rillaboom. And it's just showing the offensive presence you can get from Pokemon like Bronzong if you leave them alone. It set up its Trick Room, and now it can go and rain through with its Iron Defense and Body Press. You can even start playing Chicken with the Chen Pao, because you can start going for the Iron Defenses until it no longer wants to go for a Sucker Punch, and you'll just take that hit anyway and go for Body Press and get Knockout in return. Yeah, a similar play here happening like in uh, game one where the Rillaboom came in and then the Chi and Pao went for a Sucker Punch. But yeah, Julian reading that, saving his Torkoal, bringing in the Ursa Luna, which is now burnt, so guts boosted. And the Body Press did so much damage to that Rillaboom, you know, the Chi and Pao really helping out Julian in the situation uh, as opposed to, you know, his opponent. Um, and now this, this Bronzong is in a pretty nice position to just, you know, set up some iron defenses and just uh, dishing out some body press damage because unless there's a Fluttermane in the back and there it is, this Bronzong can pretty much KO anything right now that is not the Fluttermane. Yeah, it can, it can put pressure onto all these Pokemon and even with Fluttermane, Fluttermane there, it's not the most physically bulky Pokemon so I think the grassy terrain will only be a short saving grace for it. Shadow Ball is really the only option you can go for into this Bronzong. You're only boosting your physical defense, so Fluttermane is a bit of a problem from here on out. But if you can make it so that's the only Pokemon left in the field, then you're doing damage to it. You see the Earthquake comes on out and still oh does about 75%, even with the Grassy Terrain active, just showing how strong Earth Luna is. And that was, is, that, that, no, that was with the burn, actually. Yeah, it is with the burn uh, guts boost, but you know, grassy terrain is usually like the one move to help slow down a move like earthquake a little bit damage wise. But that was still so much damage, and even if it hadn't done a lot of damage, this Ursa Luna is also playing Shadow Claw, which can also hit the Flutter Main. But yeah, right now Hulian is in a great position to just uh, keep dishing out some more damage with both of these Pokemon. Uh, so yeah, they're. This Chienpo can only protect itself so many times. I wonder if, um, you know, maybe you're trying to stall out the Trick Room here still. Um, but yeah, you're really on a little bit of a timer. Um, the Fluttermane is going to go for a Protect here, as it's not a Choice Spec set. It is a Booster Energy set as a Sucker Punch into the Ursa Luna. Going to do a decent amount of damage. And Bronzong is just going to set up another Iron Defense. And I'm guessing this Ursa Luna probably just went for another Earthquake. No, it's a Facade to finish off that Chi and Pao. It's just done that job so, so well. Like, yeah, you know, uh, Chi Lun read into the room of just going for that Earthquake. Because you have that perfect combination, the historical combination even, of the Earthquake plus Levitate Pokemon. But when you get rid of that Chen Power, you, you remove it from the field, you stop it from doing super active damage into your Ursa Luna, and you now leave Fluttermane in a situation where it still wants to be going for the Shadow Balls. So you can capitalize on that and just go for a Shadow Claw into it. 
make sure it is gone and done and dusted. Rillaboom will help it stay safe for a couple more turns. It could go for a Grassy Glide, or it could go for Wood Hammer, or even a Fake Out. It's got three options it can go for right now, which can be a bit of a dent in the side of that Earth Luna. But Bronzong still sitting here quite comfortably. In fact, if you can get rid of the Rillaboom and you can keep Earth Luna alive, you're going to be quite safe and happy to fort face what is in front of you. Yeah, and we just saw, you know, that Bronzong now at plus six defense means that Body Press is going to get the maximal amount of damage that it possibly can. And this Bronzong here, really not too afraid of the Rillaboom, even if it has high horsepower because you have Levitate. And Moonblast here from this Fluttermane into the Earth Luna is not enough to knock it out, so the Shadow Claw is going to come in here and KO this Fluttermane. And now Bronzong is basically, uh, yeah, the... Just the wall on the field that uh, Shailung is not going to be able to get rid of anymore now that the Flutter main is gone. Flutter main is gone and Bronzong is just able to sit quite comfortably knowing that it is going to do its job. It is going to slap down the body press onto this Rillaboom and when you see these body press Pokemon get into plus 6 defense you know that even if they're not a fighting type you know that you know, that is basically the end of the day for you and you're just going to be... You, know, you just got to accept that your, your fate is there. We see coming on in is the King Gambit, who is now a Dragon type, so isn't four times weak to that body press, but it's plus six, and it's it's just so much going down onto it, especially when you're losing your Steel type as well. Facade is going to do loads of damage onto you. Both these Pokemon just in the right, wrong place at the wrong time. Julian is just piloted this perfectly. Yeah, I don't think even two critical hits on the Bronzong is going to save uh, Shilong at this point. Uh, the Ursaluna is going to go down to the Grassy Glide and the Cowtalk Leaf isn't going to crit. It is going to crit, going to do so much damage. Body Press going to KO this Rillaboom. I mean, one more crit of a Cowtalk Leaf and this Bronze Song is going to go down. But, you know, there is still the uh, Choice Specs Torkoal in the back, which is at very, very low HP. And it's... Uh, it, it it almost has to lock itself into Earth Power here, since, you know, the fire moves are not going to do any damage, you know, not even eruption if you're just 9 HP. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, I mean, as, as long as a second crit doesn't happen to this Bronzong here, I think that uh, Julian can take the second game. It feels like Julian can take the second game here. Of course, not really predetermining the outcome of that critical hit. Maybe could have been a bit better off getting rid of that King Gambit, because Rillaboom one here, you're not really touching it too much. Counter Fleet comes out and doesn't get the critical hit this time. Overheat is the one to be the saving grace here and, and doesn't get the knockout. So it's leaving everyone's favorite here, Bronzong, to be the final pressing blow. You know what some of us say, ding dong, that is Bronzong, and that's showing exactly <laughs> why this little bell is one of the fan favorites, bringing Julian back to another stage. Showing the prowess of these Body Fress plus Iron Defense Pokemon in Trick Room. Yeah, no, really well played by Julian there. Also, you know, uh, that one turn also where he called the Fluttermane Protect and just set up an another Iron Defense. I feel like, I mean, we, we see different Pokemon play like that Iron Defense Body Press uh, setup, but how often do you see it get, you know, all the way to plus six defense? And yeah, really, the fact that uh, the Fluttermane did not KO the Ursaluna, it really needed that KO there uh, in order to then also survive, because that was really your only hope against this Bronzong. But yeah, having that Ursaluna survive and then Shadow Claw just finishing off the Fluttermane meant that, yeah, Bronzong was pretty much just free to sweep through the rest of uh, the team. But uh, of course, there was one crit that happened, but one crit was fine. A second one would have been devastating, but did not happen. Uh, thank God. <laughs> it, it didn't happen, luckily, for Julian there. But of course, that was only game two, and game three is now round the corner for us. It, it, now both players know the tactics. So let's see what they bring in this final part of the match. Because Julian has revealed Trick Room Mode and the non trick room mode and Chi Lun has revealed, you know, kind of two different modes as well as we see Torkoal plus the Bronzong here as well as the King Gambit and the Rillaboom. So now you've got that presence we had earlier in, this, in the stream where it was the, if you fake out into the Torkoal, you let Trick Room go up, you fake out into the Bronzong, you let the Torkoal get a really strong attack off. Let's see what is the option here for Chilin to go for because either way you see a negative and Julian has captured this match perfectly in this third game allowing for this mind game to happen. 
Yeah, no, really, really great position here for Lian because as you just mentioned, you're either going to get a lot of damage from this Torkoal, or your uh, Ronson is going to be able to set up the first of probably many iron defenses, <laughs> as we are going to see a terrestrialization on that Bronzong. Makes a lot of sense here, does not want to be hit by Kauto Cleave with super effective damage. And uh, yeah, still immune to the high horsepower from Rillaboom, of course, thanks to the Levitate. That high horsepower going to go into the Torkoal instead. It's going to do more than half, and a Kauto Cleave is going to follow up and just KO the Torkoal with the critical hit right there. So the second critical hit for King Gambit in this best of three. But now, pretty sure this iron defense is coming out for the Bronzong, meaning that, yeah, this is going to be a problem once again for Shailong. It is going to be a massive problem from the get-go. And you're at that plus one, so you're not completely in, in the clear, you know, you're still going to take a bit of damage, but you can't be hit by this high horsepower from the Rillaboom, and it's grass attacks attacks, it'll be even less damage now because you're fire typing. And the King Gambit, you know, it can maybe fit you with an Iron Head, but it's still doing less damage because it's a Fire type and it is going to rely on its Dark type moves, one of which is now out of the picture because Indeedy is on the field. So it's down to a Kowtow Cleave or a Tactical Switch to get the ball rolling. Chen Power can be very helpful here to make sure that there is that defense drop. But at this rate, you can just go for a Follow Me and get another Iron Defense up or Follow Me Trick Room and keep getting and make sure you're in that faster position to keep your defense boost up. Bronzong already just really, really happy for what it can do and what it will do. As you see, Trick Room is the option there going into this next turn. Yeah, I feel like a uh, Chatham strat might even be to just KO everything around the Bronzong and then, you know, bring in Fluttermane later to take, you know, to uh, just fire off Shadow Balls into it. Uh, so I feel like Julian really does not want the Indeedee to go down here, but a Woodhammer from Rillaboom is going to do a lot of damage and it's probably going to be followed up by a Counter Cleave and it is going to first be a Dazzling Gleam. Barely going to do any damage even though it is super effective on this King Yamit. Counter Cleave finishing off the Indeedee. So now that this Indeedee is gone, that means that Julian will not have a tool to redirect any Shadow Walls from a Flutter Maid in the back. Bronzong is going to set up Trick Room here and yeah, this, this Bronzong is still looking strong here, and there is that Ursa Luna in the back, but it does not have its Guts boost yet, and, you know, once this Ursa Luna goes down, it is Bronzong against the world, and I'm pretty confident uh, Chelong still has Fluttermane in the back to deal with it. And that is going to be something that, you know, Julian's going to have to keep in mind. Of course, you have that mindset knowing that the Rillaboom has to now switch out to reset that grassy terrain to make it a bit more tolerable in front of that Ursa Luna. But Julian can quite easily learn about this and quite easy to say, okay, I'm going to throw down a Shadow Claw into what I think becomes a Flutter Main, or can maybe just go for more Iron Defense to try and make sure there is still that bulk there. If not, you know, you're at plus, you're, you're at the plus two already and you've already got a really good natural defense stat, you can start going for these body presses. There is a switch on that Rillaboom though, as we do see it is the Chen Pao coming in so that is going to not like taking a body press if it went into that slot. And we do see Protect coming out from the King Gambit, keeping it nice and safe. Maybe waiting for that really to come back in so it can do its sucker punches later. This body press goes to go into that switched in slot on a Chen Pao. Bring it down to its focus sash, allowing for if this Ursa Luna goes for an Earthquake or goes for anything else to get it knocked out. And it is, and that is down and out. So no more super strong bust from that Chen Pao. And it looks like to me it's going really good for Julian, unless the Rillaboom can do its dividends and stop this Ursa Luna. Yeah, I think uh, you really need to try and stall out this Trick Room here a little bit. So yeah, now that the, I'm guessing, yeah, Rillaboom is going to come back in here, set up the grassy terrain, and you have that fake out pressure for one turn. Uh, and But I, I don't think this Bronze Song at this point is going to be able to KO the Rillaboom or the King Gambit, well, I'm, I'm not quite sure, but this Ursa Luna is definitely a threat in the Trick Room, so you probably have to go for Fake Out into the bear to stop it from KOing one of your Pokémon. Uh, and yeah, I, I think once the Ursa Luna is gone, Fluttermane just wins the game. How do you get rid of an Ursa Luna that easily in Trick Room? You're gonna need Fake Out pressure, Grassy Glide uh, damage, all that good stuff, but this Bronzong is still a threat, you know, at, I believe, uh, it is only plus two, I believe, at the moment. Uh, so body press not going to do quite as much is not going to be enough to knock out this Rillaboom. That could be very, very important in this upcoming turn. It can be very, very important. But what is also important to note is that there was that double up 
into the Ursa Luna. So Chien Lun realizing that, okay, you know, I've got to resist Ursa Luna because that is the thing that's hitting my Flutter main. And Flutter main is the key to victory in this late game. You can keep trying to protect, 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 but uh, I don't think you're going to be that lucky today, Julian. So you're going to have to try and attack something this time round. With an imminent grassy glide coming out, that's still going to do a fair bit of damage with how much we've seen Julian put out from the rest of this game. So it's going to be down to making sure you get rid of that Rilla Boom and just start processing your damage in a way that allows you to force it. So Fluttermane's gone and you only have King Gambit on the field. It's going to be very, very tricky, but Julian has the tool to do it, but Chilun also has that ability as well. All it takes is one correct play from either of these players and that deadlock is broken for this late game. So Asuna tries to protect and doesn't quite get it. Oh, no, it's not going to get it, but yeah, a Sucker Punch coming out from the King Gambit is not going to do anything in this case since, you know, Ursaluna did not go for an attack and Grassy Clyde does so much damage against it. Body Press going to finish off that Rillaboom. And yeah, I actually really like that Julian went for that second Protect. He kind of has to, but also because, yeah, the Sucker Punch is kind of obvious because you, you need to get rid of this Ursaluna. And honestly, I'm, I don't know if a Sucker Punch plus... Um, Grassy Glide would have been enough, depends on how this King Ambit is trained. It does have the black glasses, but there is no Chi and Pao on the field, so it might have been a little bit of a roll there. And there is that Fluttermane. Now, this Fluttermane, it's not a choice pack set, it is a booster energy set, which means it does have Protect, so can try and stall out the Trick Room as well. And yeah, this Bronzong is not touching this Fluttermane at all, so it's really going to come down to if either Ursaluna or Fluttermane goes down first. And it's going to be a very, very precedent standing if it does. That second point going to Ursaluna, as you said, it has got the black glass of no gem power. And Ursaluna is known to be a very, very bulky Pokemon. Because Fluttermane could follow up with a Moonblast if it is that live, and it does maybe go for that, but it could even go for a Protect to try and stall out this Trick Room. There's so many options. There is that Protect going on, so it is going to mean that Fluttermane is safe for a turn here. You see Sucker Punch goes through, goes into Asaluna, who lives on a sliver of HP. Body Press goes on out into the King Gambit, isn't going to do as much damage because of the lack of typing. <laughs> and then the facade goes into it as well and gets that final blow knockout. And Julian reading that protect perfectly now has two Pokemon, one will help than the other. However, Chiolun knows that if you get rid of the Asaluna, you then can run rampant by not getting hit by the Body Press. But yeah, and the Trick Room is over now. <laughs> The trick room's over, but uh, Protect plus Trick Room is already in the books. And Hulun can run it a bit, you know, a bit risky and try and think, okay, you try and get rid of the Bronzong to uh, stop Trick Room going up. But at the same time, you can't risk leaving the Ursula on the field. So it, it comes down to if there's a Protect and if it is called correctly on this final turn. Yeah, I'm not sure how many turns of grassy terrains there are left. So yeah, the, the Ursula, it, it absolutely has to go for Protector. There's like no other play to go for here. And actually a Dazzling Gleam from the Fluttermane, so no Shadow Ball into the Bronzong slot, really has to get rid of that Ursa Luna as soon as possible. Bronzong setting up that Trick Room. And that's the thing, of course, you know, the grassy terrain, as much as it helped uh, Shailon get rid of the Psychic terrain, in this case, it's really just healing up this Ursa Luna, meaning that the Flame Orb is not going to KO it. So, uh, yeah, really, Ursa Luna being healed up a bit and then damaged a bit again by this Flame Orb. So, I, I'm i guessing if, if, if this is the last turn of Grassy Terrain, where I'm not sure if that is the case, then maybe a double protect for Shailan can still get him out of the situation, but otherwise this is over. Yeah, this is over completely. Protect is the, op op the option for Chi Lun. So could be trying to run out those grassy train turns, if not going for the miracle run of four or five protects in a row to outlast this trick room. You know, you can get a player as lucky as that. You know, it could be the run to go for. If not, it is just going to be curtains after this turn does proceed. Leftovers will recover onto this Bronzong, who I believe is a combination of just sitting there at the defense which it has and not taking much damage due to, to no one seeing it as a threat. It has just got, it's gone all the way up to the top of its HP already once in this battle, if not taking a sliver. The grass does just disappear as you said, so the burn is going to be a little bit threatening now on this Ursaluna, but unless there's that multiple protects in a row, where from that Flutter main, it isn't really going to be an option to stall out. And it does look like Julian has, is licking his lips, he's got his hands rubbing because he is going to get this victory as the protect fails on that final turn. Iron Defense goes off for a little bit of style points. 
the Shadow Claw <laughs> should clean up this battle. Yeah, so Shadow Claw is going to KO that Fluttermane no problem at all. Yeah, at this point uh, you really needed a triple protect on the Fluttermane because even if you get the double protect there, I think Ursaluna still lives with like uh, 2 HP if I saw that correctly. Um, so yeah, just that 1% chance there to still come back from that match uh, not happening there for Taiwan, unfortunately. So ma this match is going to go to Argentina. 